Hey everyone, welcome to Daily News Analysis and today is January 20th. Let's look at some of the important news of January 20. The first news is regarding a advocate who is openly gay and about his appointment to Delhi High Court Judgeship. Supreme Court Collegium is firm on appointing gay lawyer as a High Court Judge. However, government is opposing the move. So government had objected to the proposal citing that uh, Kirpal's relationship with Swiss national and possibility of bias because of his advocacy for LGBTQ rights. So uh, Mr. Kripal is uh, in relationship with a Swiss national. So will that be a threat to national security? And also he is very proactively involved in LGBTQ rights. So does it does that show his biasness towards the cause. So will he be biased as a judge? So these are the reservations from the government. However, Supreme Court Collegium is firm on appointing gay lawyer as a high court judge. So the Supreme Court Collegium stood firm by its resolve to have the government appoint openly gay lawyer Saurabh Kripal as Delhi high court judge and Supreme Court uh, Collegium says that every individual is entitled to maintain their own dignity and individuality based on sexual orientation. The three-member collegium of Chief Justice uh, D. Y. Chandrachur, Sanjay Kishan Kaul and K. M. Joseph took the rare decision to public, publish the full extent of the government's objection to Mr. Kripal based on his sexuality and his passionate advocacy and LGBTQ rights. So they have published the, all the objections by the government and this is a rare move. So let's look at the timeline. On October 13, 2017, Mr. Kripal was unanimously recommended for judgeship by the Delhi High Court Collegium. On November 11, 2021, look at the distance, uh, 2017, then after that, 2021, this was approved by the Supreme Court Collegium. Now, in November 2022, the Department of Justice refers the file back to the Supreme Court Collegium for reconsideration. And Supreme Court Collegium is firm on the appointment. So, <coughs> sorry. So, it's a rare decision that uh, the three-member Supreme Court Collegium has revealed the full extent of the government's objection to Saurabh Kripal's appointment. So, that's there. Then the Collegium referred the letters from the raw research and analytical uh, analytics, analysis wings forwarded by the government frowning upon Mr. Kripal's partner being a Swiss national that they have an intimate relationship and the lawyer is open about his sexual orientation. The government, the Collegium said, was also worried that the same-sex marriage was not recognized in India though homosexuality stands decriminalized. Moreover, the Collegium quoted the law minister's uh, massive, uh, the law minister's massive uh, uh, missive of uh, April 2021, stating that Mr. Kripal's passionate attachment to gay rights did not rule out the possibility of bias and prejudice. So government has uh, primarily two objection. His partner is a Swiss national and they have a relationship and whether it is uh, could be a threat to India. Secondly, that uh, he is uh, passionate about gay rights. So does that show his biasness? So these are basically two objections by the government, but the Supreme Court uh, is totally in favor of appointing him as the Supreme Court judge, as the High Court judge, Delhi High Court judge. So replying to the government, the Collegium said that the raw and did not consider the individual conduct of either Mr. Kripal or his past partner as having any bearing on national security. Besides, many constitutional authorities in India have ha or had foreign spouses. Many persons in high positions including president and past holders of constitutional offices has had spouses who are foreign nationals. There can be no objection to uh, this thing, no objection to the candidature of Sri Saurabh Kripal on the ground that his partner is a foreign national and also Switzerland was a friendly nation. So that is also one thing that was pointed out. 
so the collegium said the fact that mr kripal is open about his sexual orientation goes to his credit he is not hiding it in fact he is telling it so the lawyer sexual orientation is his constitutionally recognized right he has never been surreptitious about it mr kripal uh, he has competence he has integrity he has intellect and he would be an asset to the delhi high court as a judge that is what the collegium is saying now it will be interesting to see whether uh, he gets elevated as a, a delhi high court judge as the first that will be the case of first openly uh, openly declared judge as a judge of delhi high court supreme court backs right to free speech of two lawyers up to the judgeship now since uh, these appointments are going on uh, two lawyers who express their opinions about the government about some issues so supreme court is defending that also even if someone is uh, making a social media post which may be against the government which may be against the policy of the government that does not stop that person from holding a constitutional post so the supreme court collegium uh, in separate resolutions published on thursday backed the right to free speech of two lawyers recommended for appointments as judge in the madras and bombay high court so two cases are there one is for madras high court one is for bombay high court all citizens have the right to free speech and expression under article 191a of the constitution expression of views by a candidate does not disentitle him to hold a constitutional office so long as the person proposed for judgeship is a person of competence merit and integrity it refused to drop the name of advocate r john satyan for the madras high court merely because the government received the intelligence bureau report that he had shared a web portal's article which is critical of prime minister narendra modi and another regarding the death of a medical aspirant who was unable to clear neet while portraying it as a political betrayal so this lawyer has shared such post and should it go against that he should not be appointed as a judge after sharing this post the supreme court is defending his freedom of speech and expression that he has his view point and that does not stop him from holding the constitutional post so instead the collegium in january uh, 20, 17th resolution said mr satyan should get precedence over all the other names recommended by the collegium it also drew the center's attention to the part of the same ib report which said mr satyan did not have any overt political leanings and his integrity was intact on bombay high court advocate som shekhar sundarshan the government had uh, deducted uh, de deduced that he was a highly biased and opinionated person from his social media post it accuses mr sundar uh, sundarshan of being selectively critical on social media on the important policies initiatives and directions of the government so these are the objections from the government but the supreme court is backing these lawyers for their appointment to the judgeship so sharply contradicting the government's opinion on the lawyer the collegium said on the other hand there was no material to indicate that the expressions used by the candidate mr sundarshan's are suggestive of his links with any political party with strong ideological leanings in fact the issues discussed by mr sundarshan's is posed for part of public debate in the media the judges body said the collegium reiterated the names of advocate amit amitesh banerji and uh, sakya shain for calcutta high court judge it had recommended these two names for 4 years ago in december 2018 the government returned them in november 2022 without citing fresh material or ground for its objection so as you can see uh, the collegium is backing a lot of judges in the previous case we saw uh, a gay lawyer is being backed by the collegium as a judge in these cases the lawyers who have written something who have shared social media posts which may be critical of government critical of the prime minister even they are being defended uh, by the uh, collegium saying that they have the freedom of speech and expression collegium has also recommended names for three high courts So the Supreme Court Collegium has recommended the elevation of lawyers and judicial officers to the High Courts of Madras, Karnataka, 
and Allahabad. In another news, the law minister has said that the collegial system will continue. So he has said that as long as uh, the, the, the system will continue, as long as we do not have any alternative mechanisms and legislations enacted by the parliament, we will have the collegial system that we have currently. In this Google case, Supreme Court has rejected Google's plea against the National Company Law Appellate Tribunal order in Android case. So the Supreme Court on Saturday, on Thursday, affirmed a NCLAT order refusing interim relief to Google against a Competition Commission of India directive to pay a penalty of 1337.76 crore for abuse of dominance in the Android ecosystem. We have already discussed this case several times in uh, previous videos, so I am not going into detail of that. A uh, center has told Supreme Court that they will take a decision on plea on Ram Setu. So to declare Ram Setu as a national monument, they will take a decision on this plea. So the Supreme Court of Thursday recorded that the government is in the process of considering the question of declaring the Ram Setu a national monument. It allowed petitioner, former Rajya Sabha member Subramanian Swami, if he so desired, to present additional material on the issue before the Ministry of Culture. A bench led by Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandrachur asked the government to apprise the court once the process was over. Courts can't reduce minimum sentence given in POXCO, uh, POXO Act. What is POXO Act? Protection of children from sexual offenses. So the courts have no power to reduce the minimum sentence prescribed in the Protection of Children from Sexual Offenses Act on convicting the accused for committing sexual assault on children. So this was the observation by the Karnataka High Court. Justice V. Uh, uh, Srishananda passed the order while enhancing the sentence from 5 years to 7 years which was imposed by a special court in Bidar in a 10-year-old case of rape of a 13-year-old girl. Now in cases of this protection of children from sexual offenses, the victims who are minors, calling them in the courtroom uh, and uh, ha having the, uh, this trial in front of them really impacts their psyche. So the presence of POXO victims in court impacts their psyche. So the Delhi High Court has reminded the judicial officers, public prosecutors and police to be mindful of the adverse impact on the psyche or child victims of sexual offenses when insisting on their physical appearance in the court at the time of arguments. The psychological impact of a psych uh, POXO victim being present in the courtroom during the, uh, courtroom during the arguments is grave as there are allegations, accusations, doubting the integrity, character, etc. of the prosecutors, her family, etc. So this should be taken into consideration while making it making them appear before the court. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern uh, is going to quit. She says that there is not enough in the tank. So it came as a surprise. The New Zealand uh, Prime Minister, uh, a global figurehead of progressive politics, has shocked the country by announcing that she would resign from office in a matter of four weeks. Uh, in a matter of weeks, uh, on, on the, I think uh, 7 February she will uh, not be the Prime Minister, no later than 7 February. So she is 42 year old, who steered the country through natural disasters, COVID pandemic and its worst ever terrorist attack. Uh, she said that she no longer had enough in the tank. I am human, we give as much as we can for lo as long as we can and then it's time and for me it's the time. She said in a meeting of members of a Labour Party, Ms. Arden said she would step down no later than February 7, less than three years after winning a landslide election to secure her second term in the office. I believe that leading a country is the most privileged job anyone could ever have, but also one of the more challenging. New Zealand will choose its next Prime Minister in general election on October 14. This was announced by her. She said she would continue to serve as electorate MP until then. Nationwide strikes hit France as unions fight pension plan. In France, there has been a new pension plan according to which the age of pension is being 
increased to 64 years and there are protests regarding that. So the French train drivers, teachers, refinery workers were among those who walked off their jobs in a nationwide day of strikes against government plans to raise the retirement age by two years to 64. The strikes and protests expected across the country are a major test for President Emmanuel Macron, who says his pension reform plan, which opinion polls, polls show is hugely unpopular, is vital to ensure the system uh, does not go bust. The challenge for uh, unions is to transform the opposition to the reform and anger over the cost of living crisis into a mass social protest which would eventually force the government to change the track. South Africa will hold drills with China and Russia. So the South Africa which has uh, resisted taking sides following Russia's invasion of Ukraine has announced that it will stage 10-day joint military drills with Russia and China next month. The exercise is called MOSI, which translates to smoke in the local Swana language. It is scheduled for February 17th to February 27th of the port city of Durban and Richard's Bay. Kazakhstan president dissolves the parliament and calls March election. So Kazakhstan president Kasim Zomar Tokayev dissolved the Central Asian country's lower house of parliament on Thursday and set an early election for March 19th that was set by his office. The announcement comes a year after Kazakhstan descended into chaos with deadly riots that killed 238 people in January 2022. There will be women officers in command soon. The army has begun the process for selection of women officers for commanding post or uh, in the rank of colonel which has so far been the domain of male officers only. So now female officers will also be become colonel. A total of 244 of them are being considered by the army for promotion from the rank of lieutenant colonel to colonel against 108 vacancies and the first set of such postings is expected by January end. Selection is expected to ensure gender parity as they will be posted to command assignments. So these were some important news for January 28th. Let's quickly look at the highlights. Supreme Court Collegium is firm on appointing gay lawyer as High Court Judge. Supreme Court backs right to free speech of two lawyers set up for judgeship. Collegium becomes and recommends names for three judges and Collegium system will remain, uh, will continue, says the Law Minister. Supreme Court rejects Google's plea against unclad order in Android case. They will take a decision on plea on Ram Sidhu soon, said the judge tells Supreme Court. Courts can't reduce minimum sentence given to given in POXO Act. The presence of POXO victims in the court impacts their psyche, says the Delhi High Court. PM Jacinda Ardern to quit, says not enough in the tank. Nationwide strikes hit France as unions fight pension plan. South Africa to hold drills with Russia and China. Kazakhstan president dissolves parliament calls March election and women officers in command soon. Thank you so much. See you in the next session with more set of news. Till then, have a good day.